hello everybody. Um, thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm just going to film a short video while I'm stitching. I wanted to talk about a couple of things, um, specifically a couple of things about um, the Marabilia, the stitching retreat, the Queen City Stitch Retreat. It's going to be Marabilia themed. Um, it's next October, October 5th through the 8th of 2023. Um, Maggie, Kitchy Whips, and I are working on organizing that. Um, so I want to fill you guys in on a couple of things around that and um, thought I'd do that while I was stitching. I'm working on Moonlight Lullaby from Marabilia. Um, hopefully this um, sort of stitch with me setup is a little bit better than what I've managed in the past. You might hear my kids in the background some it's summer break, so they're all home. Um, so yeah, this is Moonlight Lullaby. I'm trying to get it done as soon as I can to give to my mother-in-law. Um, I'm stitching on 28 count linen. It's, um, I don't remember the name of the color, but it's from Color and Cotton. And whatever it is, I love it. It's just like, like a tiny bit off of white. Um, it's just got a little bit of gray in it. Um. So anyway, I really like it. And I think especially with the outline on the wings, the wings kind of pop and it looks good. Um, okay, so Queen City Stitch Retreat. Here's what I wanted to talk about. So I am the one who, like Maggie and I, you know, kind of divided up um, primary duties. And one of mine has been managing the Google form and putting together the, the mailing list and all that. My daughter just came in and is trying to distract me. Okay, go play. Go find something to do. Um, she was just giving me a thumbs up. Anyway, um, so today, I should say today, I don't know what today is. Today is Thursday, uh, the 17th of June, maybe. Oh my God, how did that happen? How is it the 17th of June already? Anyway, um, so this morning we sent out an email to everybody that we have on the mailing list. Um, just so, um, and I'll keep adding people. As more people fill out the Google form, I'll just add them on. But we had a large influx of people, of course, once we announced the retreat details and announced that Nora Corbett was going to be there. I'm so excited. Um, we had a huge influx of people filling out the, um, the Google form. So we sent out a test message to everybody just here a little bit ago. It's about lunchtime on the East Coast right now. Um, if you got that email, there's nothing you need to do. Um, if you did not get that email um, and you filled out the Google form or you think you filled it out, here's what you need to do. You need to first check your like junk and spam folders and see if the email might have got um, put in there instead. You can also add Queen City Stitch Retreat at gmail.com, which is the email address all um, retreat correspondence will come from. Um, you can add that to your address book. So first check and make sure that you actually didn't get the um, retreat email, okay? All the email really says is like, hi, thanks for, you know, for, for filling out the Google form and, and here's, you know, just confirmation that you're on the mailing list. If you cannot find that email anywhere, um, you probably are going to need to fill out the Google form again. So a couple of notes about that. Um, generally speaking, you only need to fill out the Google form once. Okay, we did have some people who filled it out multiple times. Um, it like, it, you know, it, and that's fine. I've filled out Google forms more than once before too. Um, usually because I can't remember if I filled them out to begin with or not. Um, but you only need to fill it out once. So if you already got an email from me, you do not need to fill it out. Or from Queen City Stitch Retreat. You do not need to fill it out again. Um, but if you did not get an email from us and you think you should have, you're going to need to fill it out again. Um, some people, their emails bounced back to us. And some of them we were easily able to figure out why and fix that. Some people, we just don't know why. Um, I think some people just may have mistakenly used the wrong email address or, you know, maybe there's a typo in the email address they wrote down. 
but also we had several people write down their physical address instead of their email address um, on that Google form. Um, your physical address is not going to help us it, in this particular case. We need the email address. Um, every, all of our correspondence is going to be via email. Um, so yeah, just you know, if you didn't get that email from us, please just go in, fill out the Google form again, and we'll make sure that you get added to um, to the email list. Um, there's no important news that you missed thus far or anything. We're just working on getting that email list up and running so that when registration does open, and just a reminder, so registration is gonna open on um, October 1st of 2022. Um, and you'll be expected to pay within a week. We expect the cost at this point to be $200. And when registration opens, we will, um, basically if we fill up in the first 24 hours, we'll do a lottery from the people who who filled out the form in that first 24 hours to um, to decide, you know, who's who's going to get it. Um, excuse me a minute while I look at my chart. It was really easy there for a while because I was just like filling in this section, um, but then I had to actually like look over and count. Normally, um, sorry if you shook a little bit, my dog just jumped up, so you're probably shaking, and I'm sorry for that. Um, normally, when I stitch two-handed like this, I have, um, I don't know how far over you can see, but I have the chart um, connected basically to my fabric right here, but um, I couldn't like guarantee it was gonna stay out of view when um, I was filming me stitching. And I, at the moment, like the way I'm set up, I can't see what you're seeing. Um, so hopefully everything's staying in the field of view enough for, for T you to enjoy this. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's the only like important piece of information that I wanted to pass along. Um, just make sure if you did not receive that email and make sure you check the correct email address you know that you gave us on the Google form but if you really don't have it then you'll need to go fill out the Google form again um, so that uh, we can make sure you get all future emails about the retreat um, you know something else this is kind of just an aside um, I've been hearing some tales recently about um how should I phrase this well you know what let me say it this way so Maggie and I are planning the retreat there are a couple of other people uh who have known little bits here and there about what we're doing um but really only literally like two other people <laughs> who um, have had some more awareness about about what's happening um, but I don't I've been hearing tale of like rumors about um, from other people about you know people claiming to have super secret knowledge of what's happening um, I guess really all I want to say is if if you are looking for information about the retreat Maggie and I, you know, Kitchy Whips and I, we're the only two people to go to. <laughs> um, I just don't want, I'm, I'm leery of, I don't know. I don't want people to feel, um, I don't want people to, fe to end up getting duped. I don't want people to think somebody actually knows something that they don't know. Um, and then potentially being misled. I don't want any of you get to, to be misled. Um, but I also don't want any of you to feel left out. There's not like, I, I don't know. I, it's, you know, Maggie and I are working really hard to put this together and we've run some of our ideas by a couple of other people. Um, 
but that's it. There's, there's not, if somebody comes to you and says they have super secret knowledge about what's happening, just I be, um, be cautious about believing that. And I wouldn't want anybody to start feeling left out as though like Maggie and I are spreading, uh, are, you know, sharing information with some people, but not others. Um, cause that's really not, not how this is working. Um, yeah, that's all. I just want you all to feel included. If you love Mirabilia, I want you to come. Um, and I know a lot of you do. And now I know just how many of you do. We got a lot of responses, um, you know, to our Google form. Um, and I know a lot of you have joined the Facebook group. I'm not as active on Facebook. Um, so Maggie's managing more of that than I am. Although I'm trying to get in the habit of checking it every couple of days to see what you guys are chatting about and sharing. Um, but obviously there's a lot of people who have joined there. And I'm just glad to see it. It's so nice to see um, so many Marabilia fans kind of coming together and getting excited about, about getting to meet her. Um, and about stitching together with other Marabilia fans. Um, I'm working on the back stitch now. I used to always save all the back stitch till the end, but um, I, in recent years, I've been spending more time stitching on these scroll frames, and um, and I stitch two handed when I'm using one, and um, I just don't like having to like scroll it up and down any more than you know kind of necessary. Sorry, I'm looking at my chart too. I want to make sure I do this right. Um, so I tend to do the back stitch, like I do the back stitch after this, the X's that I'm back stitching, um, but I'll do it before I scroll up. The, I find that um, I like a re relatively tight tension and I find that doing the beading like I just don't, don't, um, I intentionally don't scroll things as tight or pull them as tight when I've beat it because I don't want to risk tearing stitches or breaking beads or anything, um, or tearing the fabric. So I will usually, again, if I'm on scroll frame like this, what I often will do is work kind of top down. Um, or sometimes I'll kind of start in the middle and go work my way up to the top and then go top down. Um, with all of the stitching and back stitching, and then um, I'll often bead from the bottom up. I did that for Lady Marabilia, beaded from the bottom up, um, and it worked really well. Just you know, stitching top down and beading bottom up. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm planning to do here. I still need to figure out what I'm going to do for the Krynik. Um I think I may end up using, um, there's a lot of beads in this. I'm just more of a silver person than a gold person. I may use just like a pretty silver or even, I don't know, I'm gonna look at my stash. There's a lot of uh, Krynik that I think is supposed to look like clouds. I don't have the cover of the chart with me. But I might just use a fun color for that that I have in my stash instead of um, trying to buy it. So something else I've been thinking about uh, retreat-wise is what I want to finish before the retreat. So our brag table, um, we're going to have a brag table, but it's going to be, that is going to be Mirabilia and Nora Corbett centered. You know, we've told you guys, you are of course welcome to stitch whatever you want, whatever you want while you're there. Um, but we're really hoping that people will bring pieces they're proud of that are Marabilia's or Nora Corbett's and um, to share for the brag table. And so, of course, I'm thinking like, what Marabilia's can I finish before next October? And there's like one part of my brain that's like, oh, that's, I'll, I'll finish like eight things before then, which is ridiculous. Um, realistically, I'm hoping other than this one, to maybe finish two. Oh, sorry, my dog just barked. So go and pick that up. Um, 
I hope I'm, I hope you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. My bummer. Um, Freya, stop it. She's like half bark growling in her like semi sleep state. Um, you know, in it would be my preference to probably have finished Damask Roses and maybe Titania by um, by the retreat to be able to bring them. I really don't know if that's going to happen though. Um, this won't go with her to the retreat with me, even though hopefully it's going to be finished here in the next four to six weeks, preferably four weeks, um, because I'll be giving it to my mother-in-law. So she'll have it. Um, I'm going to bring Lady Marabilia to show off, but I'd like to have, have some other finishes between now and then. Um, but there's just so much to stitch. I'm glad that we have a long time to plan because certainly, you know, almost a year and a half, we should have time to, to finish some things before then. I don't know. I'll have to see what I end up managing to finish. I've been more in like a working on things I already um, own or already have as whip smooth lately. Okay, I have to say though, so the other day, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you may have seen, I pulled out an old whip. Here, I'll show it real quick because it's sitting right next to me. I pulled this out. So I started this, um, I don't know. I, you know, a couple years ago, I think, this is a fabric that I dyed myself. Um, it's an opalescent Lugana. I'm not even sure why I had it. I don't typically stitch on Lugana. But anyway, I pulled this out to work on again, and I only had part of this, like, brown blob here. And um, I put it up on an Instagram and asked if anybody could guess which um, Mirabilia it was. And that, I haven't had that much fun <laughs> in a while. It was so great listening to people's guesses. And um, then I put up a, a picture a couple hours later to show my progress on it, ask people to keep guessing. Um, and I'm sending just a little little prize to the, the person who finally guessed correctly. But to be honest with you, I thought we might go a lot longer without anybody um, getting the right answer. It was really fun. Um, Pretty Little X's on Instagram, she got the, she got it right. It's um, Fairy Treasures from Marabilia. Um, but there were some good guesses in there. The thing that I know threw some people off and it often throws me off too, like sometimes you don't, sometimes it's a surprise which colors Nora, you know, chooses. It always ends up looking great, but, um, it can be kind of confusing initially. Um, so fairy treasures, the brown is actually used as like a dark shade of yellow, like golden yellow. Um, and that's something I think Nora does a lot. Um, you get like a brown shade in there as a, you know, darker shade of yellow, which makes total sense, but can be a little confusing, I think, initially. So yeah, that was fun. And I'm, I'm hoping to do more of that in the future because I do have a ton of um, Marabilia whips. But a lot of them, honestly, are in that same state that Fairy Treasures is in, where there's just not that much of it that's done. Um, give me a moment, I'm reading. Okay. Just back stitching the wings with this color. Um, yeah, I have a lot of, a lot of whips that just aren't far along at all. I have plenty of them that only got like one day or just a couple of days worth of work on them. Um, you know, I really wanted to take a break from whatever I was stitching and start something new. So I did, but then I got put away again. Um, so I may play that game again in the future of, you know, guess which Mirabilia it is. Uh, Cause that was really fun. And I think Fairy Treasures is a relatively obscure one. I don't see it stitched very often. I actually don't know that I've ever seen it stitched. Um, I'm not sure why that is, 
but it's lovely. Um, and you can put kind of whatever word you want on the like treasure box she's holding in her hands. And um, that'll be one of the last things I do, but I'll have to think about, about what I want to do there. And when I pulled it out the other day, I realized I didn't have the, the beads for it. I don't know why. I thought I had everything I needed for it. So placed an order with one, two, three stitch. I can't explain why, but I'm really in the mood to, to work on her right now. So she's been getting a little bit of work in the evenings. I'd love to hear what y'all are working on. And if you guys are hoping to come to the retreat, I'd love to hear what your plans are um, in terms of, you know, what you'd like to bring to the brag table. If there's things you want to finish before the retreat, what those might be. Um, if you're already, like me, giving thought to what you want to stitch at the retreat. Um, I'd love to hear. And I just realized I made a mistake. And I need to decide what to do about it. Hmm. So... This stitch, I don't know if you can see, I'm like peeking behind me. Can, all right, can you guys kind of see this? So this stitch shouldn't be there. It should be there. Um, there would be times where I just leave it and add a stitch in there, but there's supposed to be kind of an uninterrupted line of beads there so I think I want to fix this this I just pulled out of the way that's the, the thread that I'm back stitching with um, just to get it out of the way that would have been the last line of stitching so here's what I'm gonna do sorry I keep bumping you um, I'm gonna see oh this is gonna be tricky I'm gonna see If I can fix it on camera in case that would help any of you. Um, so what I'm doing right now is just trying to get out its tail. So this is um, a very light gray shade here. If I can, there we go. The very light gray shade. I'll have to go look up the actual number. Um, but I had other things uh, kind of under these stitches that I don't want to unpick. So I'm just going one stitch at a time. So because the line of stitches that I need to fix is the last line of stitching I did with that color. Um, I'm doing this uh, in a way that I might, I might not, I wouldn't always do it this way. Um, if it was in the middle of a thread, I'd do it differently. So I'm just going back to the front to make sure those th other stitches are plumped up. Because it's the tail end of the thread, can you guys still see me? No. What I'm going to do is just end off. I'm just going to run these under and end this. Can you see me? I'm going to end this early. And I know I've said before, I, I'm sure I don't need to run under that many um, stitches, but I'm paranoid. So I do. And this is the back of my work <laughs> for anyone who's interested. Um, I don't judge other people based on the back of their work. You're welcome to judge me if you want to. On the back of mine, this is what it looks like. I do kind of cross country-esque. I don't mind carrying my threads. I try not to do it if it's gonna show through on the front. If it's not gonna show through on the front, I couldn't care less. So. I need to replace those stitches now. So I'm consulting my chart, which hopefully you can't see. Let's 
762, is that right? Yeah, that's 762. This is how I keep, I think I've talked about it before, but I um, lay out all my flosses in number order and um, just put them in the rings in order. I will put two colors in one baggie just to save space and to make this not so bulky as long as those two colors are different enough from each other that I'm not gonna get confused once I have, um, you know, some of the strands hanging up. So, this is relatively short, but I just really love my loop start. So I'm gonna take one strand, this is leftovers from when I was stitching the wings earlier. I'm just gonna take one strand so I can do loop start Put my leftover back in the baggie. I I tend to keep all the like cut off scraps unless it's so short that um, that like by the time you anchored the thread at the beginning and the end of your stitches that it would be basically too short to use um, for more stitches. So I'm just gonna thread my needle and. Um, see if I'm back in view. I'm gonna just put these four stitches back. Um, I can do usually do my loop start by feel back here. Apparently you can do loop start on the front. Usually my threads are long enough that um, I can actually uh, like see underneath the piece. Um, you know, my thread dangles down there so I can do it. So, yeah, this is one of those situations where I'd rather fix the mistake because I think it'll bother me if I don't. And it's not too much trouble. And usually when I see a mistake, I'd rather fix it then and there because otherwise it'll keep me from going back to the piece. Um, like if I know that I have like a mistake waiting for me to deal with. Um, it'll make me just avoid that piece. And it honestly would be more, in more danger of becoming a UFO. Um, the, the stand that I'm using, the like structure that my um, frame is on is um, I think Dubco is what it's called. Um, they might be Russian, I'm trying to remember. <sighs> they might be Eastern Europe somewhere. Um, we ordered this, I think I've had it for probably at least a year. Um, and I love it. I love this style. I love that my frame just rests on it instead of being connected to it. So I can, um, like, well, like you just saw me do. Like, I just lifted this up and flipped it over, like, back and forth multiple times. And it was just so easy to do that. Um, that's what I love about it. It is, as far as I'm concerned, the perfect style for um, a stitching frame. So yeah, I'm really interested. Um, I'm excited to see what people bring to the retreat. I'm excited to see what people choose to stitch. Um, so I know people have different um, like strategies about what they bring to something like a retreat. Um, I know some people would be more inclined not to stitch larger projects. Personally, I'm gonna be bringing Marabilias to stitch and like Nora Corbett's. I mean, that's, I don't mind really traveling with them, though. Um, I definitely would be working more on, like, block stitching like this as opposed to, like, facial features and whatnot. Um, but I'll definitely bring, bring Marabilia's to, to work on. Um, and I hope some of you will, too. Although, to be honest with you, I am completely prepared to not stitch a single thing the entire time I'm there. 
Um, you know, we talked about it a little bit on our Maggie's and My Live um, on Instagram the other night. Um, I really want to, anybody who wants any sort of help with a Mirabilia, whether it's getting started or how to use Krynic or how to use, how to do beading or just how to do any of it, like whatever questions or help anyone needs, I'm really, I'm there for that. I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, so I really do hope a lot of you will bring, um, well, those of you who have questions, because I know some of you don't. Some of you, um, there's plenty of people out in the world who have stitched more Mirabilias than I have and are at least as well versed in them, if not more so. Um, but for those of you who do have questions, um, I'd love for you to bring them to the retreat, and I'd be happy to help in any way that I can. Um, trying to look and see... What do I want to stitch next? I'm going to stitch white. Or it's B5200. There is a lot of B5200 in this. Um, you know, I know a lot of people don't like stitching white. Um, I don't mind it. I, I just like a variety in what I'm stitching. So, like, if there's any one color that um, I feel like I'm doing too much of, I'm, I'm gonna wanna switch. That's part of why I jump around a lot um, when I'm doing a piece. Like, I might stitch a little bit of purple and then I wanna change, so I stitch some green, and then I wanna change, so I stitch some pink, that sort of thing. This floss is actually a little bit longer than what I usually do, but. Some of you have noticed I do use relatively long strands of floss. That's just because I want to. <laughs> um, you don't have to do it my way. There's certainly good arguments to be made for using shorter, shorter lengths of floss. But I don't care. I like it the way I do it. So, yeah, I don't have a lot. I guess a lot to chatter about. I'm just trying to enjoy a little stitching. Our summer so far has been very busy, so um, I haven't actually had much stitching time lately. Um, Shadowing Wednesday yesterday was almost a complete bust for me. I uh, got um, I got to sit down and stitch at like 8:30 last night or something, and probably got about a dozen stitches in, and then um, it's time to go eat a dinner, so that's okay. The week, and the week before was also a bust because I thought I had a chatelaine with me when we were at our cabin, and it turned out I didn't. I have found it. I was a little, little worried about where it went. It was still here. I found it yesterday, so it's now in a box to be taken to the cabin, so I won't have that happen to me again. I'll always have one there, so if we're there on a Wednesday, I'll get to still participate. You know, that's one question I have. So for the retreat, um, when I'm deciding what to take with me in terms of like works in progress that I want to take with me, and this is true for Stitch North too. I'm going to the May weekend of Stitch North. Um, so if you're going to that, I'll be excited to meet some of you there. I already know some friends that I haven't met in real life yet will be going to that. Um, when I'm thinking about what to take, I'm not going to be taking anything that's like on a scroll frame like this. This, I don't know what these are. These scroll frames, they're okay. The scroll frames I really like are the Omonic frames. Um, I have several of those. I'm not going to be taking any scroll frame projects. Um, usually once something's loaded on a scroll frame, I leave it there until it's done. And, um... I mean, I'm not going to take a stitching stand and everything else with me. Um, they're just, they're too bulky. But then I take almost anything else, which is most of my whips. Um, I stitch Mirabilia's in a Q-snap sometimes. I have stitched them in hand, poke and stab. And then I have that one, um, Elizabeth, that I'm working on stitching using the sewing method. So I'll definitely take Elizabeth, because that doesn't take up much room. But I'll probably take a Q-snap and a few other 
whips as well. Um, to stitch north, I guess I'll probably choose at least one thing that isn't a Mirabilia to take. Now, one thing I would not take is a Teresa Wensler, I have to say. I think the chances are just much, way too high that I would um, make a mistake trying to stitch a Teresa Wensler. I think I might never even get to putting a stitch in because I'd be so busy counting. So this, um, so this is a good example. I don't know how well you can see. Um, I have a thread here that like the last stitch that I just did, the thread is a little bit twisted. So when I've said that I use my needle to like fix stitches that are a little bit wonky, this is what I mean. Um, I, I get my needle into the, in between the two strands, the way that I want them to be, and then I'll pull it down and now they lay beside each other nicely. Most of the time I don't have to do that, but, um, every once in a while I do, and it just gets my, my threads to lay nicely beside each other, um, that's still the problem I'm having with stitching using the sewing method. My um, strands do not lay beside each other nicely and there's not like, or I haven't found a quick or easy way to make them do so. I have a knot. Ugh. Does anybody else find that, um, I feel like some of the like white and stuff tend to not more than on some of the other colors. But I also am using what's even a longer strand than even I usually use this time, so I'm sure that's not helping. Um, I think it's been a long time since I had a knot that I couldn't get out, though. Usually they're very easy to get out. Usually they're basically just slip knots. But if you tug in the correct direction, they come right undone, and I can do that without even looking. This one's a bit trickier. There we go. You know, even knots, as long as they're not excessive, they don't bother me too much. Just kind of part of the process. Yeah, so I'm going to have to give some, I mean, oh my goodness, Stitch North is still almost a year away. But as soon as I got in, I was thinking about like packing and what to take with me. I'm so excited. Um, and then, you know, even doubly excited for Maggie's and my retreat since we'll get to meet Nora. I'm so excited. Well, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Um, thanks for joining me today. If you decided to sit down and, and stitch with me for a bit, um, maybe some of what I was doing and fixing mistakes and whatnot was actually helpful for some of you. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but yeah, please, uh, if you did not, if you want information about the retreat and um, did not get an email um, from us this morning, then please go ahead and fill out that Google form again. And um, probably, honestly, it'll probably be a couple weeks before I send out another email like that. Um, you know, saying, hey, we got we got um, your address. Um, it's just not, you know, it's not something I'm going to update every single day. Um, but don't worry, you're not going to miss any any important retreat news. Um, there's very little announcement-wise that Maggie and I need to put out there, at least for the time being. And if there is any important information, we'll have it, I'm sure, plastered all over Instagram and um you know facebook and whatnot so anyway thanks for joining me today guys i hope you're enjoying your stitching time and your summer and uh hopefully we'll talk again soon bye